So power is what? Power is what? Say again. Work divided by time, right? It's work per unit time, or just more generally, it's the energy delivered. You can think of it as sort of a change in energy per unit change in time. How much energy is being delivered uh, or taken away per unit time, okay? And um, we can apply that to electric systems, in, in particular circuits. If you have a battery, for example, and by the way, you may run into this. We've been drawing kind of cartoonish pictures, pictures of circuits, but you may run into uh, more schematic diagrams where a battery is represented by uh, a little line and a big line, and the little line is the negative terminal, and the big line is the positive terminal. And then the connecting wires are just lines. And if you have a resistor in the circuit, we represent that with a little jagged line. And so this has some resistance, R, which we talked about last time. And this battery has some EMF. And so you can think of it such, for instance, a battery connected to a light bulb, some, some thin filament that's going to cause a large electric field inside the filament and a large potential difference. And so there's going to be uh, energy radiated away, right? The, the, the battery is delivering energy to the rest of the circuit. And then in the steady state, the amount of energy being delivered by the battery per unit time is the same amount that's being dissipated away as thermal energy, right? The light bulb gets hot and it gives off thermal energy. And so in the steady state, the amount of energy in is equal to the amount of energy out per unit time. So we're, we can talk about the amount of power delivered. Power, we think of this in terms of change in energy, or we can think about a change in electric potential energy per unit time. We can relate electric potential energy to electric potential by saying it's the charge per, or charge times delta V. And then we can think of this as an amount of charge flowing per unit time times delta V, but charge per unit time is what? Coulombs per second is what? That's current, conventional current, right? So power we can write as conventional current times delta V. And this is a, just a, a general formula for power delivered to uh, electric elements in a circuit, okay, current times delta V. If you want to think about the power dissipated by a resistor, okay, well, first of all, the power delivered by the battery would be then I times the EMF since the, in an ideal situation, the EMF is equal to the potential difference across the battery. Uh, the power delivered or dissipated by the circuit in the power that's being radiated away in the, in, in the form of uh, heat is, well, since we know the potential difference we saw last time, Ohm's law, potential difference is the current times this quantity, the resistance, or we could also write that as current is equal to delta V divided by the resistance. Then for a resistor, uh, we could also write this as we substitute in the current, we could say it's delta V times delta V over the resistance or delta V squared over R. Or alternatively, I could substitute in the potential difference if I knew the current and say that this is I times IR or I squared times R. Okay, so these formulas are only for resistors. This one is true all the time. Okay. You'll have a homework problem or two that deals with this. The key idea, again, is that energy conservation or energy conservation in the steady state means the total energy delivered by the battery is the total energy radiated away by the rest of the resistive elements in the circuit. And we have formulas for calculating the resi uh, resistance and formulas for calculating the power. That's pretty much all I'm going to say. You should take a look at this in the end of Chapter 20 and read up on it before you uh, try the homework that's due on, uh, on Friday. And um, just one other thing that you might run into, and you may, if you're taking a circuits class or an electrical engineering class, you may have already seen this being applied. 
the loop rule and the node rule still work. Okay, it's just that in some cases we may not be we've used them to calculate electric fields inside elements in a circuit, and um, and that's fine. And then we can use those electric fields to calculate currents, for example. In some applications, in most sort of macroscopic ap applications, you may be just more interested in finding the current directly. Okay, but you could still apply the loop rule. Okay, so for example, if I go round trip through this circuit, very simple circuit here, then I would say, okay, if round trip potential difference is equal to zero, I'm going from the negative to the positive terminal of the battery, I'm going to have a EMF. Uh, I'm going in the direction of the electric field, so if I'm going electric field pointing that direction. So I'm going in the direction of the electric field when I go across the resistor, assuming that the potential differences across the thick wires are approximately zero. Then the only other potential difference I'll have is when I go across the resistor, I'm going to have a potential drop. So I'm going to say minus the delta V across the resistor, minus the magnitude of the potential difference across the resistor. Back to where I started from, that's equal to zero. But delta V is equal to the current times the resistance, right? So I could just write EMF minus I times R is equal to zero. And then just solve directly for the current in, the, in this particular circuit. Okay, so this is a simple example. But the same rules apply if you have lots of different resistors in the circuit. They may be in series. They may be two branches in parallel where you have a, a junction, okay? And we're not, again, I don't, we're not going to do too much of this, but it's, again, just another application of the same rules we've already seen. If you have an EMF, say an R1, resistance 1, resistance 2, and resistance 3, you would have a current through this branch, call it capital I1, call this current capital I2, this current capital I3. From the node rule, what do you know about the relationship between the currents? I1 is equal to I2 plus I3, right? So if you're trying to solve for those three currents in this particular circuit, you'd have to have, you have three unknowns here, you'd have to have three independent equations. We've done applications like this before, but you may see them in terms of resistance and current rather than electric field and length. So you could write loop rule equations. For instance, one loop might go through the EMF, through R1, through R2, and then back to where you started from. So that loop would give you an EMF. You have a potential difference, a potential drop across this first resistor, which is in equal to the magnitude I1 times R1. You'd have a potential drop across the second resistor equal to minus or I2 times R2. And then you're back to where you started from. You set that equal to zero. What other loop could we choose? There's two other possibilities, right? Okay, so we could go start where? Start at the battery and go through I3, right? And that would give us EMF minus I1, R1, minus I3, R3, equal to zero. Or what's the other one? Yeah, you could, go, you could go through this loop, right? Again, we don't have to go through the battery necessarily. Round trip potential difference for any choice of path has got to be equal to zero. So if I go in this direction, in the direction of the electric field through this uh, second resistor, I'd have a negative I2, R2, but if I go in the opposite direction here of the electric field through this resistor 3, I'd have a plus I3, R3, okay, set that equal to zero. You would need that node equation and any two of these loop equations in order to solve for the currents. Again, this is just a, it's the same thing we did before with electric fields, loop rule, node rule. It just looks a little different because we're putting it in terms of conventional currents rather than electric fields, but it's the same thing. You might run into this in later applications with all kinds of uh, more complex circuits, but it's the same basic rules being applied every time.